So today's video is about slide film. Now slide film is some of the most rewarding film you can shoot, but we're gonna start with the basics because when I shot my first roll of slide film, I didn't know what I was in for. So almost 10 years ago, I bought my first roll of slide film after seeing some cool examples online. I loaded up the film, shot it, and took it down to the lab with the intention of scanning the processed film, tweaking in a Lightroom, and then bang, there's my finished photos just like I'd done with all the film I'd been shooting at the time. Now when I dropped off my film at the lab, the lab tech asked me did I want these slides mounted, and I wasn't sure what she meant by it. So I'm going to break down slide film for those that might find themselves in the same situation as I was. Okay, so slide film is a film that when processed normally, as slides, which is called the E6 process, generates color positive images on the film. Instead of negatives, you actually get proper true color positives. So I'll show you an example here with 35 millimeter film. All right. So what you have here is 35 millimeter slides, or slide film, that's been processed and sleeved. Now I'll tweak this a bit so we can see it a bit better. So this is 35 millimeter, and it's hard to see without putting light behind it, which is why we're using a, a tracing table here, a tracing light. Now not only do we have 35 millimeter slide film, we can also get slide film in larger formats as well, such as medium format, which we have here. or a 4x5 large format, which we have here. And you can also get it in 8x10 in other formats too, but these are just the common examples. Okay, so now mounted slides. Mounted slides are most common with 35 millimeter. It's where you take the strips of film here, which we've got strips of six, and you individually cut each of the frames, and you put them in these little individual slide mounts. And with these, you can put them through this, which is a hundred frame carousel, and run it through a slide projector and project these images huge onto a screen or a wall or what have you. And I'll show that to you later in the video. Now keep in mind, even if you're not planning on mounting and projecting your slides, there's still some major advantages to shooting slide film in a hybrid digital workflow where you're taking the scans and working on them. Slide film has really nice color. It's got really high detail and low grain. It's got great contrasty, punchy images. And also nothing quite compares to looking at the slides up close on a light table. So let's have a look at that now. So the slides I have here were shot back in 1989 on Kodak's iconic Kodachrome film. Now the slide projector I'll be using was given to me by my grandma years ago. And these were the slides that were in the carousel when I got it. I'm pretty sure my grandma shot these photos on a vacation she took with her friends to London and the surrounding area over 30 years ago. You can see the detail and color of the slides holds up really well, even today. And the overall images have such a timeless look and appeal to them. Now, Kodachrome isn't made anymore, and Kodak even briefly stopped making slide film altogether for about five years before bringing back Ektachrome in 2018. As a side note, I'm a huge fan of the new Ektachrome and will likely shoot some in a future video. Anyways, I love the classic style of these photos. This one here I think is especially cool. Now let's look at the whole process start to finish. This is the roll of film I was shooting. It's Rolly Variochrome. Let's zoom in here, we'll have a look. Now this is an interesting film. It was a limited release a couple of years ago. And it's a slide film, also known as a color reversal film. Sometimes you'll see them listed as color reversal or chromes. Chromes and slides are interchangeable. Now, a unique facet of this film you can see is it's got a variable ISO range between 200 and 400, also listed on the box here. Now, from the results I've seen, shooting it at 200 gives better color and contrast, so that's what I shot it at for the most part. Now, I loaded this film and shot it on this camera here, which is a Rolly 35 SE, really nice small compact camera, it's got a, um, it's got an aperture uh, wheel here. It's got a shutter speed wheel on this side here. You can see on the top. And then it's got scale focus when you pop the lens out. 
Uh, there's no range finder, so you just focus based on how many feet and meters the subject is away. But it's got a really nice lens, f2.8, 40 millimeter, and takes great photos. A little built-in meter as well with a battery there. So anyways, I shot the roll over the course of maybe two or three months, uh, a couple summers ago. I processed it, and I'm going to mount it and project it. So we'll take a look at that process. So the process of developing slide film isn't much different than that of developing black and white film, which is a video we've done before on this channel. The biggest difference is you're working with four chemicals, and three of these require accurate temperature control during development. Here I'm using a Tetanol 1 liter E6 development kit. I'm keeping the first three chemicals warm in a water bath controlled by an Anova sous vide. You can see the fourth chemical bottle in the back, the stabilizer, and that's fine to leave at room temperature. Also note, this process requires rinses between each chemical, as the process is quite susceptible to cross-contamination. Anyways, you just follow the instructions that come with the kit for times and temp durations. Basically, the first developer goes in for a little while, then you rinse. The second developer, also known as the color developer, goes in for a little while, you pour it out, then you rinse. Then the Blix goes in, this is also known as the bleach fix. Uh, it goes in for a little while, then you pour it out and rinse. And then you throw it in the stabilizer for about a minute and hang it up to dry after. While the film's hanging up to dry, I'll often throw my cell phone behind the film with a white screen being displayed. That way I can kind of preview the shots that I'd taken. You can see I'm doing that here. If you'd like a more in-depth look at developing film, head over to my buddy Dustin's channel. I'll throw a link in the description below. Once the film was dry, I cut it into rows of six and sleeved it. This allows us to get out a loop and take a really good look at the film on a light table. This was one of those rolls that sits in your camera for a while and is really exciting to develop because you end up with such a variety of scenes. Here I've got portraits of family and friends, locations like Las Vegas and Italy, and subjects like motorcycles and planes. These variochrome slides have a pretty distinct look. It's what I might describe as a vintage aesthetic with kind of a unique teal and gold color palette. It's not exactly saturated, but kind of vibrant in its own way. Now, at this stage, lots of people would scan the film into digital images and file away the physical copies in an archive. I mean, it's what I do with all my color negatives, but let's take a look at mounting and projecting these photos. So, on the table, we've got our slide cutter. a box of slide mounts, of course our slides, and a slide carousel. Now, you could do this process with scissors, but a slide cutter like this makes the process so much easier, and it eliminates most of the risk that you'll make an inaccurate cut and ruin your film. With this cutter, you just advance the film with this little red wheel until it hits the line for 35 millimeter, and then you make the cut. Once you've got your slides cut to size, most slide film mounts just click together and presto, there's your mounted slides ready for projection. So I'll complete the process for the entire roll and then pop them into the carousel. So here's our projector set up on the back of the couch, and you can see at this distance that tiny slide throws about a 4 foot by 6 foot image. The projector I'm using here will cycle through the slides manually by working the projection gate back and forth. Here's some more projected slides from that roll of variochrome I shot. It's really something that has to be seen in person, but hopefully this video will give you an appreciation. I mean, no scanning, no post-processing, just a chemical and optical process with no digital middleman. And the results are these big, vibrant images. When shooting slide film, you need to meter your scene accurately. Reversal film is far less forgiving when it comes to underexposed shots or overexposed shots, and there's really no way to fix it in post. You can even see a few examples of this in my roll of variochrome. There were a couple of overexposed frames, 
and a couple of underexposed frames. With all that being said, consider the dynamic range of your scene. To put it simply, keep in mind scenes with both very dark and very bright areas can't be accurately captured the way your eyes see them. You kind of have to pick what you want to be properly exposed and accept that anything that's significantly darker or brighter in your scene may almost become black or white. It's definitely something you want to think about when you're composing a high contrast scene. Now let's move the camera up to get a closer look at these projections. While I've got the projector out, I'll show you some slides I took on a motorcycle trip through Vietnam in 2015. The film I used was Fujifilm Velvia 50. This film can yield some amazing saturated colors, and is a very different film than the Variochrome. Hey, I hope you learned a thing or two about slide film and have a chance to go out and shoot it for yourself. Thanks for watching. See ya.